Good morning. It's a privilege to welcome you to worship this morning. We're so glad that you chosen to worship with us and that you parked your motorcycle outside and, and that you're here this morning. We're glad that you're here. And I'm Jamie Alexander, one of the pastors, and it's my privilege to welcome you and invite you to join me as we pray and dedicate our service of worship before the Lord. Father, we thank you that we can gather here today. It's a day that you have prepared for us to worship you in. We come as Nehemiahs in the calling that you've placed within our lives. So today, as we continue through our sermon series on the book of Nehemiah, help us to understand and identify with our purpose for you also. Lord, we love you. and We thank you for all that you are, for all that you're doing. It's in the saving name of your Son, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. And together we say, Amen. If you will, take out the insert that you have in your bulletin. It's an informational colored uh, insert of color. And you have information on a baby shower. Thank you. There's a baby shower on one side and on the district conference. But on the other side is information on a seminar and on a revival that we have here at the church. And I want you to know about this because we would love for you to be involved in these things. On October the 3rd, which is a Thursday, here at the church... Janet Marshall from the United Methodist Foundation and George Rhodes, who is an attorney in Rogers, will be here to offer to you free advice and instruction on wills, estate planning, on things of that nature. It will be a lunch meeting. Lunch is free. It's from 1130 to 130. But we do ask that you make a reservation so that we have enough food to serve you for lunch. And if you could do that by... October, uh, by September 30th, Monday, September 30th, that would certainly help us out. If you would like to come and not have lunch, know that you're welcome to come, but we have the understanding that um, you will not have lunch in that way. But if, you want, but if you want to, just call and let us know that you're coming. Because you know what? You're not the only people who are going to be here. We've got churches from the north part of Bentonville, Benton County, that will be here, so the other Methodist churches. And so we've asked them to also do the same so that we can be fair with everybody. And so if you'll do that, and if you're interested in that, it's called Provide and Protect. Then also on the evening of October the 3rd, in the evening October the 4th, you have opportunity to meet the Arkansas Bishop of the, of the Arkansas Conference. He, we... The churches of Benton County and Washington County are going together and offering a revival and a renewal event that the bishop will be leading. And that will be held in Elm Springs, the Elm Springs Church, which is right off of 540, east of Springdale. And that will be at 7 p.m. each night. We'd love to have you in attendance. Information about that is on the bulletin. And then Jan's going to tell you more about the churchwide baby shower we're having. And then next week is district conference. If you would like to attend that, we'd love for you to be there. And so I thank you for taking time to look at this. Maybe you don't want to attend any of this, but you could take this home and share this with someone who might have an interest in them. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> It is good to see everyone here this morning. If you happen to be a guest with us this morning, we just want you to know how much we appreciate you worshiping with us. If you're a guest for the first time, we'd like to make sure that you find out more about this church. We are, we're also pleased to be a part of this church. And, and before you leave this morning, if you will step into the narthex and just give us your name and address. I know people are so reluctant to do that, but we promise that we just want to be able to share a lot of good things with you. This week, when we have your name and address, we will ask someone to go to your house and to deliver a mug, a mug that is yours to keep. Uh, they will not be there for a visit, but they will have that mug filled with information, information that tells about the many ways that we have to serve our Lord, to serve our community and beyond, and to serve one another. So we hope that that sounds exciting to you and, and that you may want to know more and more about what's going on here. In the meantime, we just want you to enjoy the fellowship that is present in this place today. The attendance pads should already have been passed. Uh, if someone new has come into the row that you're in, please pass them one more time. We'd like to know who's here when you give us your name. That helps us know you're here 
but it also helps us to figure out who might not have been able to come today. That way we can do a better job of staying in touch with people in our community of church here. Uh, if you will open your bulletins to ministry opportunities and events, I will continue with a little bit of information here on the other side of the insert. We've just got so many things that are going on, but I do want you to know that Sunday, next Sunday, September 29th at 3 o'clock is the Northwest UMC District Conference. You can read about that. We hope that, uh, that that might be something that you would enjoy going to, listening to the business and being a part of that conference. And after the business session, we will there will be a time of just fellowship. So we hope that if that is of interest to you, that you will participate. Also, for those of you who know Shannon Wicker, we watched her pregnant for a long, long time. It seems like forever. But she has had that beautiful little baby, uh, and that is daughter Reagan. Reagan was in the second service this morning, and Shannon was back to singing. We're going to have a baby shower for her this Saturday, an all-church baby shower. It's going to be from 10 until 12, either in Becker Hall or the chapel, but we hope that, that uh, you will come out for that and just celebrate another new baby in our church. We love it. We just love it. Uh, also, I want to tell you about the United Methodist Women's Fall Luncheon, which will take place this Wednesday at noon. Uh, the message just sounds great. Churches in the Wildwood, Ozark Rural Churches. It is presented by Susan Young from the Shiloh Museum. So we hope, women, that you have signed up to come to that and to come to the luncheon as well. If for some reason you need to make any kind of changes, please call and talk with Sue Niebrig. Her phone number is listed here in the bulletin. The only other thing that I would like to announce this morning is that the United Method Methodist Women are about to have the bazaar, and that will be in two weeks on Saturday, October 5th. Everything is pretty much in place. It will be from 8.30 in the morning till 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and believe me, as many people as have volunteered to help with that, they still have room for more help. One of the great things about helping, I can't tell you how many times I have heard people say, gosh, I really got to know a person in the church that I've been passing by and, and just didn't take time to get to know. So that's a bonus of coming and working at the bazaar. But there's plenty of work that needs to be done, and it's all for such a wonderful cause. We hope that if you're not able to work or, or uh, not wanting to do that, at least you will come and, uh, and celebrate by being here and being part of the whole thing. So with that, I just want to say God bless. Let's have a very special service this morning. Thank you. No.
we stand together this morning, let us join in our call to worship. It's found here in your bulletins, and it's also on our screens this morning. Create in us a clean heart, O God. Do not cast us away from your presence. Restore us to the joy of your salvation. And saying in me a willing spirit. Amen. God is good. And all the time. God is good. And we're so glad that you're worshiping today here in this place. Hope you survived all the motorcycles and around. It was People were everywhere this weekend in Benton County, weren't they? Even where you didn't expect to see people. They, there were people. But we're glad that you've chosen to be in this place. And I, I welcome you. And we need you to help us to make sure everyone is made to feel welcome. We greet those around you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ.
morning. I'm reading from Hebrews 6, 10 through 12. Listen to the word of God. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Lynn. I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward now for a time of tithes and offerings. Thank you, Larry. As we worship this morning, I pray that you will consider this time of giving back to your church, to your community, to those around us, a time of worship where we prayerfully consider what God has given us, what we can give back to our church and to those around us. It's a time of offering, of giving, of understanding what God has given us and giving back to those around us. As we do each Sunday morning, sometimes we, we skip it for a few weeks just to give you a break. But I've been trying to each the last few weeks to remind you that please give an extra dollar or two or whatever you'd like. But give that dollar, and as you do so, prayerfully consider what a dollar may mean to someone else somewhere in this world.
most gracious and giving God, we offer these gifts to you in love and in thanksgiving, prayerfully understanding what you have given us and what our duties are to your kingdom and to your world, sharing with those around us the blessings that you have given us. Lord, bless these, these offerings today, and may they be multiplied for your kingdom. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. I invite everyone to be seated. And as you do so, if you would, take out the insert in your bulletin. It has our celebrations, our cares, and our concerns on it. Right at this moment, we're grateful that we don't have anyone in the hospital, unless we've had some in the last hour or two. But, you know, we have lots of people in and out of the hospital, so we're thankful right now that we, we don't have anyone. But we do have some people that are going in for surgery this week. Those include Roy Tunnell, so we ask you to keep him in your prayers. Also, Doug Grant and uh, Greg Franklin are going in for some procedures this week, so keep them in your prayers. Rod Alford, we thought he was going in this week, but that's been rescheduled. He had other things he wanted to do in his life, so he moved that back. So anyway, keep, keep Arlene in your prayers, particularly with Rod going into surgery. We also want to uh, pray for Vicki Jones. Uh, she's having some difficulties, health difficulties, so please pray for her. There's an extensive list of people that we're praying for that you can pick up as you exit, if you exit through the, the back doors this, this morning. So pick one of those up. There's 
extra details in there that tell you what a little more clearly what's going on with different people and those friends and family and people we know that are in the military they're listed there that we're praying for and you know some of those that have friends across the country they're they're listed there also so please pick one of those up and know who you can pray for and who we're praying for here at the church well this week we ask you to pray for the family church of the nazarene a local congregation here in our Bella Vista community. Pray for them as you go about your week, as we'll pray for them also. They're worshiping this morning the same God that we worship, so we pray for all the different congregations here in our community and around our northwest Arkansas area, that they would be a blessing to those around them and that we would be a blessing to them also. There are many things we ask for your prayers for. One thing I'm going to ask you to pray for this week and, and continue on is our new We've got a new children's director and a new uh, youth director. They're both part-time positions. Both of those individuals, Kristen Kreider and uh, David Hansen, both have children and families and, and, uh, and are working part-time here at the church, and they also have other jobs. So pray for them. We're doing some construction downstairs and remodels and, and things going on. So pray for our children's ministry and our youth ministry. As great things are happening there. We have more and more people looking and joining and, and visiting us each week. So be in uh, prayer for that. We have uh, one other thing to celebrate this week. If you are not aware, Brother Jamie had a birthday on Friday. I was able to surprise him with, with singing happy birthday at the first service, so it's not a surprise anymore, but we're still going to make him do that because I know that y'all want to sing happy birthday to Brother Jamie. He was from the years old, and <laughs> he can tell you whatever he wants, but... If he would, you stand up again one last time. He has been a wonderful for us. He celebrates all the birthdays and, and everything with all of you. I know you're very much aware. He's such a hospitable person. So we want to uh, congratulate him on his birthday and sing one time, happy birthday. One more. so uncomfortable with us doing that it is great it is absolutely great thank you for doing that for brother jamie i know he does appreciate it very much if we would now let us go to god in song as we prepare to pray us pray. God, as we gather to worship, we are thankful for your presence in this place, your love and your grace that sustains us, that leads us on and pulls us forward. Lord, we pray for those in our congregation who are ill, that are away, those that are with us that are trying to recover, and for those that watch us on television and seek us out on the internet. We pray for all these people. Lord, we pray for Jack Hunter and Emma Rose Jennings as they are in hospice care. We know that you are watching over them and that you tend over their lives, but we pray for them for comfort and, and healing and a time of understanding with you, their God. Lord, we pray for our ministries here at the church, for our children, for our youth, for our adults, for all of us, as we gather each week to worship, as we go to work, as we celebrate, as we play, Lord, thank you for your presence during all these times. 
and remind us when we see one another that you are there, that you hold us and keep us, so that you lead us and give us purpose and hope and love. Lord, we pray for healing for our world, for healing for people in Africa and Egypt and Syria and all the other places that are suffering through conflict at this time, through struggles and violence. We pray for our country as we've suffered some of the same. Lord, we, Lord may we be reminded of your love when we see the traumas of this world. May we be reminded that we have things to do that you are calling us to be people of peace, to be healers, to be promoters of justice, to be doers of your word and not simply hearers. So Lord, today I ask you to help us to find that specific purpose that you are calling us to do for each one of us, for our church, for our community, for our country and our world. Lord, lead us and guide us. Pour out your Spirit on us so that we would truly know that our work is your work, that our words are your words and our actions are yours, and that they're holy and blessed by you, our God. Lord, we pray all these things in your Son's most holy and precious name, and we do so by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, thank you for my birthday greetings. I'll let you you may wonder how old I am. Well, I'm doing a reversal celebration. I turned 17 on this birthday because that's how many years it is till I retire and get my first Social Security check. And so that's my goal, you know, to make it there and get in, get that amount in. So I'm excited about that. So thank you. We are working through the book of Nehemiah, and we're doing it at a very rapid pace just in four Sundays, just 13 chapters. But we could spend a lot of time. And in the four chapters, we've been introduced to a man that had a purpose, and it was God-given purpose. And that causes us to stop and think the purposes we have in life, because at all ages and stages of our life, we are called to be in service to God through our divine purpose. And so today we're going to be talking about what has happened in chapters 3, 4, 5, and 6, because a lot of things has happened the wall has been built. And they have come to a point in time in the conclusion of that. But the building of the wall was not easy. There were distractions. There were obstacles. There were opponents that wanted to drive Nehemiah off course. But Nehemiah stayed the course. So I invite you to take your Bible if you brought it from home. If you'd like to follow along in the Pew Bible. We're reading in the 6th chapter of Nehemiah. And together we're reading just two verses. Verses 15 and 16, about the completion of the wall around the holy city of Jerusalem. So the wall was completed in 52 days. And when all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence. Because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. This is word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do you have any unfinished projects at home? <laughs> that has garnered a giggle every time. Um, apparently, we're all alike in that, you know. 
You have an unfinished quilt top that you haven't worked on in a while or a piece of embroidery or sewing project. Or you have books that you've left unread. You've started reading one book before you've finished reading another book. Or in your garage or in your workshop, there are projects that you've started and that you've just put back and you haven't completed them. You know, when I, I have a grandmother who is, she'll be 94 soon, and she still has an unfinished embroidered quilt top that she started when I was a kid. And you know what? We just may use that someday to wrap her up in because um, it's not going to be finished. We're all alike in that we have projects, things that sometimes we don't get to because we become distracted easily. Or our interest varies and we move on to something else. Or situations in life kind of sidetrack us. Or are you a person like Nehemiah? Who understands purpose. And that the calling of purpose is so strong that you want to fulfill it. That you're determined to do so and you do not let anything cause you to get off course. Nehemiah had a purpose to see the walls of the holy city of Jerusalem built. And they weren't. They were, but it wasn't easy. They were built, but it was not easy at all. In fact, there, were, there, were op, there was opposition, there were opponents, there were adversaries, there were obstacles. There were plenty of things to sidetrack and distract Nehemiah. But no one or no thing was successful in that. His opponents, they used intrigue, they used innuendos, they used intimidation. But none of it worked. None of it caused Nehemiah to fail in fulfilling purpose. Now let's, let's reflect on what, where we've been in the last two weeks and what's happening in the book of Nehemiah. In 587 B.C., Babylonians invaded the city of Jerusalem and they took it hostage. And they destroyed the city. The temple was destroyed. The walls of the city were in ruins. The people were forced to evacuate. Over an 80-year period, they came back. But when they returned, things were not at all like they had been left. The city was desolate. And they were a people that were living in desperation. And at first they had an ideal about revival and renewal and reform in the city. But they became distracted and reforming a city became a distracted, unfulfilled, unsuccessful project in their lives. And so there's a man named Nehemiah who is living in Persia. He's a cupbearer for the king. He has a place, he has a royal position. He's living in the lap of luxury in this culture. But within him begins to be an intense burden, a calling about this place over here called Jerusalem. Because he shares a lineage with the persons that are in the inhabitants. And there is something that he believes God wants him to do in life. That's his purpose. You know, we all have a purpose, right? How many sermons and books and lessons and articles have you read on purpose and fulfilling your purpose? Nehemiah is another opportunity for us to really think about purpose. We have a shared purpose in life as followers of God, as believers in Jesus Christ. And that is to worship and praise our God who is eternal. That through our relationship with God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, we are brought into a relationship with God and we have an opportunity to express our adoration and praise to Him. That is a shared purpose that we have. But individually, we have individual purposes that God has placed within our lives. Unique to who we are. And you and I can either choose to fulfill that purpose at whatever age and stage we are in our life or deny it. I've told you before that I had a, a, 
a great, great aunt who helped me to understand purpose. When she was 98, she, she asked why she was still here. She understood from God that her purpose at that point in time was to be involved in a local church, her local church, to tithe, to be present. And I always, have, I always think about Aunt Gertrude, even at that time in her life, she still wanted to fulfill her purpose. But I want us to take a little trip back in time. The day, the year is 1940. And the place is London, England. The person is Winston Churchill. You know that at that point in time in our world's history, the world was in chaos and was in crisis. Adolf Hitler's Nazi empire was racking havoc. They had overrun and overruled Holland and France. The Nazi advance was seemed to be unstoppable. It had affected Great Britain. And Neil Neville Chamberlain was currently the Prime Minister at the beginning of 1940. But he was overwhelmed by the monumental task he had in his realm of influence. And so in disgrace, he resigned on May the 9th, 1940. He threw up his hands. He, he was over it. He just wondered, could anyone else sort out the mess that his country was in? So on May the 10th of 1940, Winston Churchill was summoned, summoned to Buckingham Palace by King George VI. And the king stared at Churchill often during the conversation. And there, there were pauses. Because there was reflection and thought before words were spoken. And ultimately, King George said to Winston Churchill, I want to ask you to form a government. Now for six years... Winston Churchill had been being prepared to answer that question. And he agreed to do so. How would you have felt if you were Winston Churchill in that place at that moment in time? With the, with the survival of a nation being placed upon your responsibility well following the appointment Churchill he met with the political and the military leaders and officials and advisors and he kind of put, put together a, a coalition of the government and he wrote about this and in his writing we see that he understood purpose and because he was in purpose the weight of what he was about to do and what he was being asked to do and called to do was not as great as it had been for Neville Chamberlain. As I went to bed at 3 a.m., I was conscious of a profound sense of relief. At last, I had the authority to give directions of the whole scene. I felt as if I were walking with destiny and that all my past life had been in preparation for this hour and for this trial. My warnings over the last six years had been so numerous, so detailed, and were now so terribly vindicated that no one could gainsay me. I could not be reproached either for making the war or with want of preparation for it. I thought I knew a good deal about it all, and I was sure I would not fail. Therefore, although impatient for the morning, I slept soundly and had no need of cheering dreams. Facts are better than dreams. So I ask you today, what caused Winston Churchill to possess such confidence? What caused him to experience relief? 
It was because he was fulfilling a purpose. And it was a purpose greater than him. And it was a purpose that would benefit lives. And through the effort of this one man, this one person, a spirit of despair was destroyed. And it melted over a nation. And a spirit of hope was revived and renewed. That's where Nehemiah was. You know, every one of us ends up somewhere in life. We all do. And it's either a place we want to be or possibly it's a place we don't want to be. Some end on their purpose. And others never accept God's purpose for their lives. And they don't absolutely end at the best place. You know, stop and think about it. If your purpose was written as an epitaph at your death, what would, it, what would your purpose say? She made her car payments on time. He picked up his socks and put them where his wife told him to. Or would it say, he or she fulfilled God's purpose for their life? Nehemiah teaches us the importance of fulfilling purpose. His actions teach us that help us to realize that we can fulfill our purpose. Because a life of purpose always begins with the concern that God places within you. And so we think about Nehemiah. Here he is. He's comfortable, but God places a concern in him. And he's willing to leave everything he's known to go to a place that is unknown to him. Because he feels that is his purpose. And so purposeful people, they within themselves as they follow God cultivate a concern. William Churchill, he spent six years developing this concern. Nehemiah spent four months before he ever went to King Artaxerxes and asked him to go. They spent time. And so must we. Hearing, seeing, understanding what God is doing and how God is revealing himself to us. And not everyone will share your concern over the same purpose. Not everyone has that purpose. But what is important? That it's God's purpose for you and that you know that. Not everyone is going to be concerned about fulfilling God's purpose for their lives. What would have happened if Nehemiah had not been concerned about fulfilling his purpose? What had ha- would have happened if Winston Churchill? See, it's, it, it is difficult for us when we deny what God's purpose is for our life and I have discovered that once we understand our purpose God uniquely often gives us a concern for fulfilling that purpose before he helps us to understand the solution and that's where trust and belief and faithfulness in God becomes our weapons and our strength And two, as you and I fulfill our purpose in life, we have to understand that fulfilling purpose is not about meeting selfish desires and needs. It's about something that lasts, that's eternal, that has eternal consequences. God-given concerns, they never are really about you. They're about how God can use you in his kingdom and in people's lives. In Ecclesiastes, in that chapter, we read all the things that God does. and tells us there's a time for this and that. In verse 11, he says he, that God has planted eternity in human hearts. See, you and I were not made for a span of time, but we were made for eternity. So our purpose is eternal. It goes on too, and it has lasting consequences. Nehemiah's did, Churchill's did, and your does. 
And so Nehemiah prayed, continually asking God to reveal purpose. And God did, and God will. And his concern wasn't about broken down walls. Because it was, the concern was God had made a promise to his people, the Israelites. And God said that his people could return and that he would restore their fortunes. He would bring back what had been destroyed. And God was using Nehemiah to fulfill this. He used Nehemiah to help people find their rightful place in God's way. And that is our purpose. You know, everything we have is in trust to God. We're just trustees. And the role of a trustee is one who um, owns nothing, but who is legally accountable for something. The trustee doesn't ask what, what the percentage is in it for me. They say, it's my responsibility to use the resources I have for good. And that's what you and I are in the kingdom. We're trustees. And so we have to ask ourselves, how can we be positive influence? How can we offer purposeful, positive influence in our world? How can we influence others for good? How can you? Because God has placed us in a sphere of influence where we can be used. And our purpose can be fulfilled for eternity. John Wesley understood this. It's part of our Wesleyan heritage and history. We know that Mr. Wesley understood a purpose. And his purpose, he wrote this way. Gain all you can without hurting yourself or your neighbor. The unintermitted diligence and with all understanding which God has given you. Then he says, number two, save all you can by cutting off every expense which serves only to indulge foolish desire. And third, Wesley said, and then give all you can. In other words, give all you have to God. We have a purpose. And so we have to concentrate our energy on that purpose and not become distracted. Our energy is not based on good ideas. It's based on God's ideas. See, Nehemiah could have put his energy in overcoming his opponents when they sought to, to really hijack what God was doing. And they offered him all types of ways. They were very cunning and conniving. Just read it there in chapters 5 and 6. All the ways they wanted to cause Nehemiah to lose out on his purpose. But Nehemiah didn't listen. He was determined. He was not distracted. And so think about what God is calling you to do. Or asking you to do. Or encouraging you to do. Or maybe you're still trying to understand it. God wants to reveal it to you. And concentrate all that you are on that which is eternal and will last. And that's by fulfilling God's divine destiny for you. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you like Nehemiah's in this world. You've designed us with, to live a life of purpose. You've given us all a unique contribution to make. You've given us a burden, a concern, a passion. And you call us to invest our life in that which is eternal. So Father, help us to understand and to see. And not to become distracted by the obstacles in our past and in our lives. Help us to know that all that we experience can be used for good to fulfill an eternal purpose. Not simply for us, but for you 
and for others. So, Father, help us to make the rest of our lives count for eternity by giving you all that we have in our lives. Make our lives a life of purpose. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our risen Lord, we pray. And together we say, Amen. As we prepare to, to leave this morning, uh, our closing hymn is Only Trust Him. And I invite you to ta- make that hymn your hymn of prayer. It's hymn number 337. Offer it to the Lord as you pray and ask Him to to help you understand and fulfill that divine purpose He has for you. If you'd like to become part of the church family, we'd love to receive you in membership here. You're invited to come on your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord, on transfer of your membership from another church family. You're invited to come and be, spend time out here at the altar praying or to be prayed with by one of us pastors. But I invite you to stand and join with us as we sing as you offer this song as a, as a prayer to the Lord. Will you join with me? We please stand as we sing hymn number 337, Only Trust Him. God bless you and thank you for joining with us today in worship and following 
this um, time in worship, well, there is an opportunity for you if you're visiting with us at the church or, or new to the church and you want to know more about the church to join with us for pizza for the pastor that is in the chapel and it'll start at 12.15. It's just kind of a casual time together. And I want to remind you of the band concert that will be here at Becker Hall at 3 p.m. that we'll have an opportunity and the privilege of hosting. Going forth in the knowledge that our God is a God who's faithful. He's faithful in our past. He's faithful in this present moment. And, and you know God is a God who's faithful for our future. And his son Jesus Christ has gone to prepare all eternity. To be mine and to be yours. And as we go, remember this. Don't just come to church. But what are you supposed to be? Be the church. God bless you. Have a great day.